a good guitar string vibrates to create a sound. Speed of, speed of wave in the guitar string is always 440. Vibrating string creates a sound wave that moves in the air. Wow, got two speed. Okay, okay. So one speed is in the guitar string, wave in the guitar string, 440. Then you have wave in the air. That is 330. Okay, good to know. I was like, wow, I got two, so many waves. Which graph correct shows the variation of frequency with wavelength for waves in the string and in the air? So we need to compare both in the string, wave in the string, and number two, wave in the air. <laughs> How to choose? Uh? We go straight line and curve. Okay, whenever there's graph questions, here's what I recommend. Think of an equation. Check what's on the axis. Force, sorry, not force, frequency and wavelength, right? You see this axis, frequency and wavelength. All these are frequency and wavelength. So what's the equation? V equals F lambda for waves. So can we rearrange this so that F, you know, this is like a Y equals to something times X. Okay, so let's put F on one side. So we have F equals to V over lambda. From here, we can think about uh, how the graph will change when you have a graph of f against lambda. Do you recognize this pattern? This f proportional to 1 over lambda is very similar to our, in our what we call reciprocal graphs where it is 1 over x, y equals 1 over x. All the shape looks like this one. In physics, we don't look at the negative part, we look more at the positive part. So it should have a curve that looks like this. If you plot y against x. So straight away, I can already see and say, okay, a and b is gone. Why are you straight lines? f and lambda is not linear relationship, cannot. It's inversely proportional. So that's out. Not linear, right here. Not linear. It's good to write reasons so you know why the answer is not a and b. Let's go to c and d. Okay. Now how do you decide if is string on top air at the bottom or air on top string on the bottom? <sighs> okay, we need to think of the pattern again. Y equals to 1 over x. Why if it's not 1 over x? What if it is uh, 4 over x? What does the 4 do? So whatever constant value on top for this type of reciprocal graph, the constant will make graph either higher or lower up. So maybe I change the thing, then here got a few more curves. Oh? Bigger constant. Lesser constant is stick lower down. Like that lesser constant. So what is bigger, what is smaller? What is in our graph? Here we have f equals to v over lambda. So this is our constant that is different from air and different for string. Which one is bigger? Wave in the air, 440. Oh, sorry, wave in string, 440. Very fast. Wave in air, a bit slower. So that means the string here is larger. So this V is larger for string. Speed of wave in string. So hence that means the graph for string should be on top. So this one wrong order already. You need to swap. This one correct. String is higher up because your constant, which is 440, is larger. Okay, so this is our graph of f equals to 440 over lambda. The one down there is f equals to 330 over lambda. That is c. So make sure you know how to think of reciprocal graph. These are called reciprocal inverse relationship. And how uh, that constant can change the shape of the graph. Okay, so that's all for this video. Hopefully that was helpful. But I'll see you in the next question.